I'm Joellen McCarthy, and I'm a lifelong learner and educator who believes in the power of read-alouds. I'm also the proud author of Layers of Learning, where I share my thinking around the ways we can use picture books to connect literacy and caring conversations. Together, let's connect our students to the stories, the people, and the possibilities for learning on and off the pages of their books. Welcome everyone. I'm so excited to be here today. I am Joellen McCarthy, the host of Stenhouse's Behind the Book series. As you know, we created this series so that educators and students can learn the behind the book fun facts about many of their favorite stories. And we get to interview authors and illustrators. And today, for the first time, I'm thrilled to have all three creators behind the brilliant picture book biography of the infamous Nikki Nakayama. So welcome. We have Jamie McCallick and Debbie Michiko Florence, the co-authors, and the lovely and talented Yuko Jones, who did the illustrations. Welcome, friends. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Of course. And I know we discussed prior to this, because we have so many wonderful voices, that we would start with um, a little behind the book story of what the book's about and what brought you all together. And Jamie, you had mentioned you would be happy to give our viewers a little um, book talk about this wonderful picture book. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so this is a story about Nikki Nakayama. She's one of the greatest chefs in the world and her LA restaurant in Naka serves kaiseki. So it's a formal Japanese dining experience of many courses. There's all different cooking techniques and local ingredients used. So together the dishes tell a story about the season. And it's, it's basically storytelling food, which I know for authors, um, I can speak for Debbie and me, I think is um, who love food. That's a very exciting concept. Um, um, and it's a really beautiful concept. So what's remarkable about Chef Nikki is she is perhaps one of the only female Kaiseki chefs in the world. And because of this, she was doubted many times along the way. Um, and when others said she couldn't succeed because she was a woman, she'd always say to herself, I'll show them. And she did. So it's an incredibly inspiring story. It's um, one I hope that's empowering for kids. And it's about not letting anyone tell you you can't achieve your dreams. Um, and just real quickly, um, I want to say that we set it up as uh, a kaiseki meal, so or the way Chef Nikki serves it anyway, which is 13 courses, 13 bites. And each bite is part of her story. So when you open up the book, it says, come, sit, taste, and it's to let the reader feel like they're being served a meal. Um, so yeah, that's it in a, in a nutshell. Beautiful, beautiful. It's such a celebration of storytelling, of art, of food, of food memories, of culture and family and traditions. One of the joys of being able to work with uh, Jamie on this is that we partnered very well together. Um, Jamie did what I call the heavy lifting. She did the research. Uh, she got to, well, I wish I'd been able to, but she actually went to Ennaka and ate there and interviewed and met Nikki. Uh, so she did a lot of the uh, legwork before we sat down and wrote the story. And um, I don't know how other co-authors co were because this was the first time that Jamie and I had co-authored a book, uh, but it really went well. Uh, we'd take turns, we'd write a draft and then send it to the other person and they'd revise it and then send it back. And we'd go back and forth until we felt like we had something uh, we could be very proud of. Um, the other thing is that one of the things I absolutely loved um, about Nikki's story is that she, her Japanese culture is so tied in to a lot of her fam family memories. And in bite one, which is one of my favorite spreads, if I could just read very quickly from it, Nikki Nakayama was born in the United States. Her parents were born in Japan. Outside of Nikki's house was Los Angeles. Inside of her house was Japan. Sometimes the two cultures felt very different, but in the kitchen, they became one. Nikki's mother cooked American food with a Japanese twist, like meatloaf with soy sauce, rice instead of potatoes, and on Thanksgiving, teriyaki turkey. And for me, my upbringing was very similar. Um, 
I am third generation Japanese American, which means my grandparents were the ones who were born in Japan and immigrated to the US. Uh, but we, our meals were very much a mishmash of Japanese and American. And in fact, I've told this story to Jamie many times, but um, we had rice with every meal, um, even if it wasn't Japanese. So when we had spaghetti, we'd have the spaghetti and the pasta and on the side, I'd have a bowl of rice. And it wasn't until I was maybe in third or fourth grade and the first time I ate at a white friend's house that I realized that not everybody eats a bowl of rice with their meal. Uh, so I was, I found a great connection with um, Nikki's childhood memories of food and the blending of two cultures. I know Yuko, you had said you wanted to share specifically how that influenced your work behind the scenes in the drawing. And you had mentioned you would share your sketches for that bite one. I had this very unique opportunity. And this was my first debut um, illustrated picture book. And uh, I was very fortunate to be able to work with the team over at Macmillan and Jamie and Debbie, all of them very encouraging and helpful. Since this was my first book, I was pretty clueless. And I knew that I was getting feedback from the authors as well as from the editorial team. Um, Grace, the editor, would compile all the information together and they all sent, she would send me a huge um, big note to me so I can make improve. <laughs> I do make some edits on the sketches. Those, that's how I worked. And uh, so I was never sure which, you know, feedback what I created. Um, it's called thumbnails, basically how the entire story flows when it comes to um, illustration and just to give everyone an idea how this is how I envision the story should flow. And I would get feedback from um, the ed editorial team and the authors. And based on that, so this is a sketch, refined sketch, the first sketch I created, the real actual book size sketch I created for the page, um, a book bite one. And as you can see in the background, I envisioned, since it's in LA, like, you know, high rise building and uh, palm trees. And um, then I knew she had, a, she has a brother, older brother. And other than that, I didn't have um, much information about her family and dynamics. I basically just put the grandparents there. And based on that, I received the note saying that Nikki's brother is much older than that and removed grandfather. He's not supposed to be there. And instead, you know, include her sister, who is about four years older. And also the father looks a little too young. So based on those suggestions, I, this is uh, also background was a problem. It needed to be more of a middle class, like residential back, you know, neighborhood. So I changed the background, regular, you know, bungalow houses. And you can see that the brother here, right here is much older. And now that's Nikki's sister. And I hope the father looks a little older. And just like um, Debbie was saying, I, Absolutely, and absolutely enjoyed incorporating Japanese elements throughout the picture book and the story. Um, you can see that this um, Kakejiku artwork scroll I included um, hook size that he's a woodblock artist, famous wood, uh, woodblock artist from 1800s, and I included his artwork and I tried to tie this artwork into the climax, which is bite 12. If I, um, is it okay if I share real quick right here? Here, I just tied into that. That's how you know the rising sun and the great wave, big wave. So I kind of try to incorporate as much of Japanese element as possible into the artwork, and you know that make sure that no one's wearing shoes in the house because Japanese people don't wear shoes in the house. It's all slippered and soft feet. Um, and this is the final product. This is the final artwork with all the text. Um, beautiful text Jamie and Debbie uh, created so this is what it looks like and that's that was it was really truly a collaboration like in you know, a teamwork to make this book happen even from illustration perspective point of view I love that I think those are such important lessons for kids to hear about how your constant collaboration and investigation and questioning each other and sharing feedback and reflection I think that's such a key um, component for all that we want our kids to do and to achieve, you know, and an opportunity to have those collaborative conversations, to learn from each other, to be able to gather feedback, and then to see how we can all um, improve. I just think, too, the opportunity to talk about the research that went into this and, you know, the, the inspiration that Nikki Nakayama was and is, still is, in her role as a 
female and in her culture and in her family, and just is a groundbreaking chef in the world. Um, is a, there's so many aspects of inspiration in here. What are some of the hopes that you have that you hope kids will take away when they are reading this story and thinking about the process and how it might influence their own work? My biggest hope that they'll take out of the story is that it will empower them to, you know, we're always told by different people, you can't do this, you can't do that. And to just use those words as fuel, like Chef Nikki does to achieve your dreams. Um, that's what attracted me to the story to begin with. Um, there's, you know, and and I we read a review recently where um, a little girl was reading the book and at each page when um, Chef Nikki did something, the little girl said, yes, yes, you can. Yes, she can do that. And then at the end, she said, yes, I can, which it makes me almost like tear up thinking about it because that to me is like the ultimate heart of the book. So, yeah. So beautiful. <laughs> Debbie, would you like to add your thoughts on that? I absolutely agree with everything Jamie said. Um, I'm hoping that uh, kids will, you know, not be discouraged. I mean, we all get discouraged from time to time. I always liken this to my writing journey um, and the hundreds of rejections I collected on my way to getting published. And uh, over and over, people are saying, no, you can't, no, you can't. And uh, eventually I got that, yes, Yes, you can, and um, started my career as a children's author. But it took a long time, and I think Nikki's journey shows this: that you know, she from a very young age was interested in cooking, and from a very young age was like, "No, I don't want to work in my family's um, warehouse. I'm going to do something different." And even as she took the steps to reach her dream, she had to, you know, overcome different obstacles. So I'm hoping that kids will see that they can chase their dreams. It might take a while. They might have to uh, readjust or learn new things. But, you know, if you really are passionate about something that um, not to let other people tell you, you can't. Well said. And you go. Yeah, I totally agree with Jamie and Debbie. And the reason I was instantly connected to this story when I read this for the first time was that how Nika overcame obstacles, despite the fact that she was being told no all the time. And it, I could totally relate to that because it, my life was kind of like that too. When I, uh, when I was 23, I came to the United States. And uh, before I came here, a lot of people told me that that is not a good idea. Why do you do this? You can't, you know, you don't, we barely speak English and like you go there and get degrees and like, it's not possible. A lot of people told me no. And, but I just said, you know what? I think I can do it. I'm just going to show them wrong. I'm going to prove them wrong. And I did. And, you know, it worked. And same thing with being an illustrator. A lot of people thought that that was just not a realistic dream, but hey, it happened. So, it went, you know, you never, you have to really believe in yourself. You have to um, find your unique gift and what makes you happy and what, you know, gets you excited. For me, it was drawing and illustrating and uh, just go after it, go after your dream, never, ever give up because it gets hard. Like, you need, it, just like Debbie was saying, we get a lot of rejections or things wouldn't work out the way we expected. And it gets really discouraging, but when it's hard, you can never, you, you shouldn't give up, especially when it's really hard. Just keep moving forward and it'll happen. And I think this might be a good place to interject the repeating phrase um, in the book and that Nikki repeats is kuyashi, which is a Japanese word that kind of likens to like when somebody tells you you can't do it, it's kind of like, I'll show them. Uh, and that's what we did. <laughs> and that's what Nikki did. <laughs> I love that. I, this book has so many amazing opportunities for discussion about mindset, persistence, and, you know, as you've said already, you know, not letting someone um, tell you what you can't do and, and pursuing your dreams. And I think even um, just the celebration of family and food and culture, which kids can then take and internalize and celebrate aspects of their own culture and their own lives. It's such an opportunity to serve as a model. One of my favorite pages is when Nikki in Bite 2 is um, shopping with her grandmother and she's saying how excited she is about this opportunity. And she says that food isn't just about eating, it's about sharing a table of love and laughter. And I think, you know, especially if we consider all of the opportunities 
enemies and in, in different family members and ha- what traditions exist. It's kim- giving kids an opportunity to see that they can also share their stories. And that's such a powerful, beautiful thing and how they can look at food or whatever aspect of their family's traditions as part of a celebration and share that so we can all learn from one another and experience those joys. Such a joyful book. Thank you. I love um, having the opportunity to meet with all of you and to work with all of you and sharing your behind the scenes. Does anyone have any other maybe little story behind the story that we would not know unless we had this opportunity to talk with you? I know you have a beautiful author's note, several notes in the back. You even have a recipe, um, but are there any little tidbits of information we wouldn't know? Jamie, I want you to tell the socket story. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so when I went to eat at Anaka as a parting gift, she gave me a bottle of sake to take home with me. And, um, and, and the book wasn't signed up yet. I didn't know if it would ever become a book. So I thought I'm going to hold on to it until, if, you know, if it ever becomes a book, then I'll open it and, and celebrate. So when we heard the news that this book would be published, Debbie and I went out to get sushi to celebrate. And we called um, Chef Nikki from my car to let her know that this was happening, which is very exciting. But we also opened that bottle of sake and toasted it in the car. And because we couldn't bring it into the restaurant. Let's, I, <laughs> um, yeah, it was such a special moment. Um, yeah. That's wonderful. I love it. And I love the fact, and our viewers might not know this, but this is the first time that Jamie and Debbie are getting to meet Yuko in person. Well, face to face, anyway. I'm so excited. <laughs> Yes, it's so wonderful. And we, Jamie and I have talked about this many times, how lucky we feel um, that uh, Yuko was the one who has done this beautiful rendition of Nikki's story. Uh, she really did uh, bring to life uh, the words. And this is why we call it a collaboration. You can't have one without the other. And Thank you and keep sharing your talents and your gifts with the world. We all uh, benefit from that. So I wish you much success. Thank you for joining us on the Behind the Book and keep in touch, keep writing and keep sharing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joan. Thank you.